You're at a pivotal moment in the company's history today. Have you read The Innovator's Dilemma? Is Google at risk of being truly disrupted from AI? You know, search is always, from the outside, people look at it and say, search oh, kind of looks easy to do. The craft of search is very hard. It's the core search business, which the ad revenue in search is about a $200 billion run rate. You know, one of the first things I did was to think of the company as AI first. We, we launched AI overviews about a year ago. It's now being used by over one and a half billion users. Uh, in over 150 countries. Over two decades, I think, we've had a real North Star of understanding what users want in search. Is Google being disrupted by AI at this moment, or is Google leading? Since the rise of AI, everyone's been asking the same question, will AI kill Google search? So in this video, we're gonna hear directly from the CEO of Alphabet on what he thinks the impact of AI is going to be on the Google search business. So I pulled a few clips here from a conversation between Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai and a member of the All In podcast, David Friedberg, where they discuss point blank, what is the impact of AI on Google searches business? And they also get into why Google might actually have an advantage in AI. So without further ado, this is Boardroom Wire. I do breakdowns of business and technology. Let's get into it. You're at a pivotal moment in the company's history today. Have you read The Innovator's Dilemma? Uh, you know, my, I, 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 I'm obviously very, very familiar with the concept. I don't think I've read the book actually, but, right. uh, but you know, it's one of those things which is so much in the ether, you think you know it, you know. Right. So. I say it in jest because that's the talk of the town, the talk on Wall Street, the talk in Silicon Valley. Is Google getting disrupted in this moment? AI seems to create a fundamentally different paradigm for human computer interaction. Mm -hmm. Consumers are asking AI questions through chat interfaces. They're getting complete answers. They're engaging with AI systems in a way that they traditionally didn't do with the classical search interface. Is Google at risk of being truly disrupted from AI? Is the core search business, which the ad revenue in search is about a $200 billion run rate mm -hmm. out of $360 billion of your total revenue, most of your profits. And it seems like Google's in a really challenging quandary where if you disrupt yourselves too quickly, all of that revenue can go away, it can be really impactful. So is Google being disrupted by AI at this moment or is Google leading? So I love how Friedberg jumps straight into it and is very direct here. So there's no fluff, no buildup. He just asks, is AI going to disrupt your core search business? Now, I also liked his point about the innovator's dilemma. For context, this was a book written in the 90s by Clayton Christensen and describes how successful companies, especially market leaders, get blindsided by new technologies and incumbents because they're too focused on defending what works in their own position. So that pretty much describes Google to a T right now as they have this huge core search business that's ultimately being disrupted by AI. Now, he also highlights the reason that this is so impactful, and that's because search has become a $200 billion a year business for Google by serving them up links. However, these new AI models like ChatGPT and others are not just giving people links, they're giving people answers to these questions. So that's changing completely how people interact with this information. And Wall Street and Silicon Valley have picked up on it and asked themselves the question, if LLMs are just giving you answers, then why are people going to go to Google to get links? And more importantly, how does that impact Google's ad revenue? So this is why this is really an existential moment for Alphabet uh, and the overall Google search business. So now the question is, does Sundar Pichai see it the same way? So let's jump into it and hear his response to this really direct question of how it's going to impact Google search. It's a good frame, a good question to talk about. Uh, you know, I've definitely, uh, you know, for almost a decade, uh, you know, one of the first things I did was to think of the company as AI first. It was very clear to us. Uh, we had Google Brain underway in 2012. We acquired DeepMind in 2014. 2015, when I became the CEO, I said, look, the technology is really evolving. The reason we were excited to be approach our work as AI first uh, is because we really felt that AI is what will drive the biggest progress in search. And so, you know, I, I think even the last couple of years, I viewed this as an extraordinary opportunity for search. I think if you look at how much 
information means to people. I think they're going to, each person is going to have access to information in a way uh, they've never had before. So it feels very far from a zero sum construct to me. So here Sundar's giving people a little bit more context that Google has actually been involved in AI for a lot longer than people appreciate. So it's easy with the advent of OpenAI and Claude and others to forget, but Google launched Google Brain, which was an AI research lab back in 2012. And they also acquired DeepMind, another AI research lab in 2014. So they've been focused on AI for a long time. And when Sundar became CEO in 2015, he sort of internally declared the company as AI first. It's also interesting how he frames AI as an opportunity in search and highlights how AI can actually improve the ability for people to query information uh, and receive information. And he also highlights that it's not a zero sum game, right? So I think what he means by that is just because you have AI and the advent of people searching for things in AI, doesn't mean it's going to be a one-to-one -one replacement with the Google ads business. So it's really an interesting perspective. Let's keep going and hear how he frames up the opportunity. And we are seeing it empirically when people are using search. Obviously, there are a couple of major things uh, we have done with search. Um, we, we launched AI overviews about a year ago. It's now being used by over one and a half billion users uh, in over 150 countries. It's expanding the types of queries people can type in. And we see it empirically, the nature of queries is expanded. So there are whole new use cases coming into search. We find for queries where we trigger AI overviews, uh, you know, we see query growth and the growth continues over time. So here he outlines one of the things Google's doing to combat AI, which is their AI overviews functionality. So if you use Google lately, you've seen these but these are basically summaries that Google puts at the top of the search results, which pull from multiple different sources, the links below, and synthesize answers into a concise summary. Now, on its face, that may not seem like too powerful of a feature, but when you take into account Google's distribution, it's really pretty impressive the scale that they're able to deploy products at. So AI overviews are already being used by a billion and a half people, like Sundar mentions, across 150 countries, just by virtue of the existing Google users and their sheer distribution. It's also interesting too that he said AI overviews are driving more volume and usage in Google. So I think that you can see pretty clearly what their strategy is. It's not to completely change the experience, but to basically build on top of the existing search experience and give people the mode that they want to be able to access the information in. So obviously Google's not just going to stop there. Let's listen to what else Sundar and the Google team are going to launch from a product perspective. You know, getting the feedback from AI overviews, we are, you know, we we've recently we are testing it in labs. There's a whole new dedicated AI experience called AI mode coming to search. We'll speak about it more at Google I.O. And in AI mode, you can have a full-on AI experience in, in search, including follow-on conversational queries. And we're bringing our cutting edge models there, uh, where the models are actually working to answer your questions, using search as a real native tool, right? And, and there the queries, people are typing in queries, like literally long paragraphs, right? The average query length is somewhere two to three times is what we see in uh, search as it existed uh, two years ago. So we are seeing people respond. So here he gives more context that AI overviews were just the beginning and they're rolling out a full-blown AI mode. So since this interview, this feature's actually been launched. So I'm gonna pull up a quick demo on the screen here, but this is a full-blown conversational AI experience baked directly into Google search. 
So after you've Googled a long form question or any type of query, you can follow up naturally into the AI mode and start to have a conversational experience like you would in ChatGPT, but directly within Google's user interface. Now, this is super powerful, not only because they have search directly integrated and running in the background, but Google is also providing all of the context and data from search history into this AI mode. So unlike OpenAI and others, Google doesn't have to guess what you care about, right? Or collect that data. They have decades of data of what you've searched for, what you click on, your habits across Gmail, YouTube, you name it. So that really gives Google a data moat that all of the other LLM providers would be extremely envious of. So let's listen up to what Sundar says as he wraps up the innovator's dilemma point. Uh, you know, search is always, from the outside, people look at it and say, search oh, kind of looks easy to do. The craft of search is very hard. Over two decades, I think we've had a real North Star of understanding what users want in search. And you know, we, you know you've been here, we, we are kind of a very metrics driven company. We kind of know what works. Uh, users are, are our North Star. And, and empirically, we see that people are engaging more and using the product more, right? So, uh, so all that. Uh, to your question about innovators' dilemma, I think. The dilemma only exists if you treat it as a dilemma, right? Like, you know, say so for me, all along in technology, you have these massive uh, periods of innovation and you lean into it as hard as you can. It's the only way to do it. You know, when mobile came, everyone was like, well, you know, it's like you're not going to have the real estate, like how will the ads work, all that stuff. Uh, you know, mobile was a transition which ended up working great. I can give great examples, right? Like TikTok has come in. YouTube has thrived since the moment TikTok has come in, right? And uh, it was a whole new format. We, we uh, did shots when we launched shots. Shots absolutely didn't monetize anywhere near long form, but we just leaned into the user experience. And over time, when we figured out monetization to follow. So, you know, to me, you know, you don't think about it as a dilemma, like, you know, because users, you have to innovate to stay ahead and you kind of lean in that direction. So here Sundar points out a few things that are really important. So one, while search is disrupted by AI, the data has not shown up yet. So usage is still empirically going up. It's increasing, not decreasing. Now, additionally, Sundar also talks about treating this as an opportunity and not a dilemma. And he gives two examples of how Google is really used to overcoming shifts like this. So the first with the shift from desktop to mobile, at the time, people thought that was going to be extremely disruptive to their business. But ultimately, that worked out pretty seamlessly and ended up being a big positive. Now, more recently, they also had the rise of TikTok and how that impacted YouTube with short form content versus long form content kind of becoming dominant. And I think that example is really good, too, where they launched YouTube shorts. At first, they weren't able to monetize it in the same way as their long form content, but ultimately they figured it out. Right. So I think that also speaks to the DNA at Google and how they think about things and really how they've used their distribution and their status as a behemoth in the market to ultimately weather these technical shifts and come out on top. Now with that, I'm going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. it really helps out the channel. And if you enjoyed the content, come on back. I'm Boardroom Wire. I do strategic breakdowns of business and technology. See you in the next one.